Ma, ma, ma. The effeminate male athlete today. For those of you in North America that follow uh, foot, college football, we just saw a Heisman Trophy winner have a bad game, uh, lose a game, and run and jump up on the audience barricade and hug mommy and mommy just hugs him and puts a sheet of paper about this big so nobody can see baby boy crying supposed to be our premier quarterback going into the nfl the guy who said well you know i don't know i don't know where i'm going to end up cockily uh if a team wants me, maybe they have to give me part ownership in the team. What a pussy. What a pussy. And if I was standing in front of this guy, I believe his name is Caleb Williams. You can go look him up. Uh, you can probably Google a feminine uh, queer bait quarterback. For the University of Southern California weeps in mommy's arms. Meanwhile, if you watch the video, you got a dad, I assume it's a dad, or maybe it's a mama's boyfriend. You never know what the hell you're getting in this world today. Sitting there going to touch his back and doing like that, you know, can't even pat his son on the back and whether that was his daddy or not, he don't have a daddy. A lot of you running out here today don't have daddies. I saw this on the Black and White Sports Channel, which is a great sports channel that I enjoy watching. And there's a black guy that hosts half of the videos and a white guy that host the other half of the videos they mix it up i assume from different locations but they're in together and they call it black and white sports and uh the black guy was was doing this one and uh he preceded it with well you know 25 or 30 years ago when i was playing little league baseball I went to cry to my mama, and my mama pushed me away, and she said, baseball players don't cry, and that was the end of that. Well, my mother's brother was a major league baseball player, and I can assure you, uh, I never would have made, even, wouldn't even have got back here from the not known part of my brain. Nowhere near the front to go cry to my mama if I made a bad play or lost a ball game. And I bring my son up the same way. My dad, God rest his soul, died when I was 11 years old, but he wasn't candy ass in me either. These people were strong. They did what they had to do. God help us, is all I can say. Boxing is no better. Uh, I'm, I, there's one guy, really, we, we look at a couple, I mean, we look at heavyweights because we're assuming at Joe's growth rate, he's, he's going to be a cruiserweight or a heavyweight. At bare minimum, he would be a light heavyweight. Uh... So we look at these upper weight classes. That's what we typically look at. And uh, we, we look at a guy, Richard Torres. He's a nice guy. Uh, he's got a personality that would draw uh, 
every queer bait in the world, every effeminate fag in the world to the sport of boxing. He's almost a comedian, but not not Ali, not Muhammad Ali, ha ha. More of a ha ha. Uh, Jared Anderson, although we don't know much about seeing, we haven't seen many interviews that he puts out. This guy's a damn head cracker. And I hope to goodness he don't flip out and go Deontay Wilder queer bait crazy. They cheated down the government. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Yeah, that, that Deontay Wilder. Well, he's going to be okay now. He's got Malik's skin. He ain't going to be shit. And I hope Jared Anderson has two hands. He uses them. And as a matter of fact, when I see him, I, I see a little bit of Sonny Liston in this guy. This guy lets his hands go. It's not in there fucking around and of course there's some amateurs that we watch that we dearly love and they are men they're young yet but they're already men Joe's favorite guy favorite guy just I don't want to say worships the ground that this man walks on, but close to it without making, without being an idol worship of someone. Joe really, really likes the British light heavyweight bare knuckle champion in Great in, in Britain. Uh, it's the big. B BKFC light heavyweight champion. He's a man. You know, I often wonder if we were living in the U.S. right now and if Joe were in a public school how it will work out for the rest of the guys in that public school. As I grow older, uh, and this happens to strong men whom I aspire to be in that category, I aspire to be in that category. That's my aspirations. Old men get to where they can release their emotions more freely. And I'll cry at the drop of a hat if I see something really nice and really sweet in this cruel, evil world. But I ain't going to do it on a football field. I ain't, ain't going to do it in a boxing ring. I'm not going to do it at a ice hockey ring. Rugby field. Dear God, the effeminization of the male athlete today. Tyson Fury has a male belly dancer coming out on there. I believe it was the second fight he had with Wild. He got so much backlash on that, that'll never happen again. There's no room for it. And especially in boxing. These guys running around wearing these rainbows. Well, I support them. You are queer bait. The Bible says if you hang around a den of thieves, you are a thief. You hang around and so support a group of Queer bait pedophiles, you are a queer bait pedophile. 
I don't want to hear it. I'll classify your ass. I ain't diversifying with you. So this Caleb Williams, to my understanding, won the Heisman Trophy last year. Star UFC quarterback. And I go, paints his fingernails, by the way. You won't do that around me. I don't care if you're Tyson Fury, if you're Rocky Marciano, who the hell you think you are, Deontay Wilder or anybody. I see that shit, and I'm going to disassociate with you. And chances are I'm going to say, hey, what are you doing? You are aware you're a queer bait. You're an effeminate queer, queer unusual and odd, <laughs> not odd in a good way, not odd in a non-conforming way to the evils of this world, but a queer bait odd. And I'd probably tell him. I'd be looking up so high, I'd have neck pains, because the man's a lot bigger than me, but I wouldn't hold back. I'd say, get that shit off your damn fingernails. Your daddy should have beat your ass if thought ever went through your mind. Everything's getting effeminate. The whole damn lot of sports. And it's just pathetic. So if you're a young guy, I'd start worrying less about your hairstyle Less about having queer bait friends. Less about your dance moves. And start worrying more about your damn sport and being a man. Just be a man. Now what did the Heisman Trophy winner, greatest quarterback, going to be coming out of the draft? What did he prove to everybody? Proved he's a loser. You don't have a man's heart to push forward. And unfortunately, a woman's heart won't do it in that sport. Well, you're discriminatory. Fuck you. It's biology. Sick of your shit. Sick of your Walt Disney fairy fucking mental illness going on. I'm not adhering to it. Not for one second. Guy came on the other day on a it was a political video. Well, I I, I think uh, and this is I watch this guy too because ninety nine point nine percent he and I are on the same page. And he gets on there uh, and and give him a watch, give him a subscribe because I'm not downing him, but he did something real wrong yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, some he puts up a video in this, uh, I believe Steve Scalise, a congressman, and that Fruit Loop Clinton guy, that effeminate queer bait. You believe in the election wasn't real in 2020? You believe the election real? And the guys wanting to talk about the the uh, the problems that are going on today. Your dollar drop inflation rising, uh, all this war mess going on, and all the announcers could say, you're an election denier. You believe the election wasn't real. You believe the election in 2020 was stolen. And that guy danced around and did not answer it. You know, he asked him eight times, do you believe the 2020 election was legitimate? And a conservative guy, wouldn't, Steve Scalise, wouldn't answer it. And the guy on the black con, uh, black conservative uh, perspective channel said, hey boy, he did the greatest thing. Look how he schools this Clinton retard. And he didn't school that guy at all. See, because Steve Scalise is an effeminate male on the political spectrum. May look tough to you. You may like his stances, but... 
I would have gotten that queer bait's face and said, damn straight that election was stolen, and here's why. It went down the list. Video taken in Atlanta, 10.22 p.m. on election night. Video taken in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 10.02 election night. And I would have went down the list. Illegal setups in these states and these state legislatures not making the election law and the Secretary of State people making the election law. Specifically what the United States Constitution says do not do. So fuck no, that election wasn't valid. Fuck yeah, it was cheating. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sure was. What the fuck of it? I'm telling the truth. And maybe I'd get up and walk away from this guy. Maybe I'd punch him in his fucking face on national television. See, because that's what real men do. You can't push a real man, but so far. But see, the rest of you effeminate males out there, the ones that we look up to that are supposed to be tough, yet you're effeminate queer baits, are making it where these other kids coming up, they don't even know how to, or that it's decent to stand up against the bullshit. You got boxers, every card you watch, every high profile card that you spend a lot of money on. That's why I don't spend no money on this shit. I'll spend it watching Danny Christie and some other BKFC bare knuckle stuff, but when I ain't spending it, I'll watch it later free on YouTube. They giving them a damn dime of my money. These uh, queer bait promoters want to keep putting queer bait competitions on. I'm not interested. Just ain't. These kids don't even grow up enough to know that they're supposed to stand up for themselves. They think it's a bad thing to do. Every high profile card, you got a fighter taking a damn knee. He gets hit and goes down on a knee and quits. The women fight harder than the men. Something I condone and allow that little bit of change in the world. And I respect those gals a whole lot. But I'm not really into that. But they're putting on better performances than our men. Is anyone not seeing this mess? i tell you who is seeing it. Young people, that young male athletes that are getting effeminized. So our next star NFL quarterback, a tough guy, he was asked the next day, well, I know by an effeminate queer bait, I know you're emotional right now, so is there anything you can tell us about that from the devastation of yesterday? And his queer bait, next star quarterback for the NFL said, yeah, when I have moments like this, I just, I generally go home and I cuddle with my dog and watch movies. You can't make this shit up, folks. You just can't make it up. And then most of you sat back and say, well, why are you saying anything about this? You're a bad man. I'm not a bad guy, right? It's just you have trouble dealing and hearing what a man says. It's your problem. It's not me. So I just don't get it. I really don't. You know, I've raised my son in a great way. He don't get it either. He senses for a damn second disinterest in, uh, pulling back from, not giving the percentage that you gave yesterday. And he gets to start sparring with you and he'll knock your fucking teeth out. Dad, this guy had, you know, what the fuck? I told you not to hit this guy. Dad, he, he wasn't committed today. It's falling down. This is good for him. He's learning a lesson. If he's going to be hanging up in here around me and be one of the ones that are elite to train with me, 
he needs to act accordingly. And that's exactly what my son said. And next when it comes up, maybe it's, maybe it's worse for that guy. Shit can get worse. That's how you operate. We sat and we look at professionals that had 26, 28 fights. And we're sitting there and we're leaning back in the chairs. And as I go to point, Joe looks up and says, that's where the left hook would have came. I, w I, I would have, boom. That guy would be on the canvas. That'd be done deal. That's what, we, that's what we're doing, see. We're not out here in the off time uh, going to Cinderella movies and uh, shit like that. We're studying the art of boxing. We're, do, we're trying to develop better character, all of us, myself included, to be a stronger man. You younger folks in boxing, it's just there for the taking. It's just there for the suit. Just reach out and take it. Because as long as you're not one of the queer baits, and you're fashioning and molding yourself into a man, a real man, you can go out there and seize anything you want. You don't need the, all the talent in the world. A quarterback proved that. If you've been watching boxing the past nine months, you've seen uh, Mrs. Techniques, I won't even call them Mr. Techniques, get downed and downed and downed in a plethora of fights. You can have all the technique in the world. You can be the fastest guy out there. You can be the hardest hitter out there. Naturally the hardest hitter. And you'll get your ass whooped if you've got an effeminate heart. You know, you're in a stare down and you're thinking about, well, I, you know, oh, when I get home, I'm going to play with, you know, my Labrador Retriever. It's good to think to go home to play with your Labrador Retriever. That's a great thing to do, but not at that time. You deserve to get your nose broke. You deserve to be sipping soup through a straw for three months. You deserve it. Not even man enough to pick the proper sport for your ass, which would be badminton or that sweeping sport that's in the Olympics, God knows why. You can be a chess player, but be careful with that. Because a real man may run up on the chess board and the chess table and flip it over in your face and knock your lights out. You wake up with chess pieces all over the damn place. What happened? You got your ass beat by a man. That's what happened. That's why any of the boxers in the 60s or 70s would flatten anybody today across the fucking board. <coughs> across the board. So wake up and be a man. You young guys, don't fall into this effeminate bullshit. Put some clothes on us like a man. A woman's walking around with spandex to show her ass. You, that don't mean you need to be doing it. A woman's walking around with a pocketbook. That don't mean, mean you need to be doing it. All we got is a bunch of boxers that either have a left or they have a right that are more concerned instead of developing the other the other fist, they're out here developing the style of their pocketbook. And another thing, if you don't wear fucking glasses, this is just a hint to you, you dumbass. Put a pair on that fit. You know, glasses that are coming out to here.
I'm in Saudi Arabia, so therefore I'm going to put a big smock on to make myself look like an Arabian knight. And I'm going to put a pair of diamond studded glasses on this big and walk around like the effeminate queer bait that I actually am. Greatest pleasure I got. I did in the past two years in boxing, right? Was that a feminine queer bait, Wilder? And y'all can be impressed by it if you want to. Y'all can be impressed. And it's coming to Tank Davis, too, if he don't get his shit straight. Uh, and the rest of them, too. Ryan Garcia, you just line them up. There's, they come in all races and varieties and colors and got different religions. But they got one thing in common. They're little queer baits. Biggest thing. They get up for one of the press conferences and Wilder's running his mouth and then uh, uh, Fury goes off and then that big mouth. You know, he's got a pretty girlfriend, right? Deontay Wilder does. As soon as that bitch opens her mouth, she gets ugly as hell. And she's got an ass so wide, she can't get through a standard door. And that's another thing. You kids think that the biggest, fattest ass is somehow appealing or something. Are you sick? No, you're just a feminine because you really like big, fat men. So it helps you appeal to women. was good seeing her getting her big fat mouth shut. Looks like a little angel, very beautiful face. And then the minute that fucking mouth opens, you you know, it was like Madonna. Uh, back in the day, I had been probably got out of college when she come about. But we're all looking and we're like, what this pretty girl, man? With the first two songs she had. And then that bitch opened her mouth, and we, within a year, we were like, this, this bitch is ruined ugly. That's Deontay Wilder's girlfriend right now. And blessings to her, I don't mean it. She just opens her mouth and filth comes out. People don't like hearing that shit. And if he or her chooses that people don't look on her like that, clean the fucking mouth up. There's a difference between men and women. Women shouldn't be talking like that. Especially while they're popping gum. So, that's my take on it. I'm sick of seeing it. Sick of seeing it. And I'll call it out. That queer bait quarterback from over there at USC ain't going to be shit. So just all of you quit worrying about it. He's not a winner. He will never be able now to get the mind adjusted. He's been hanging around a babying mother and an effeminate male figure in his life. I don't know if it's his daddy, mama, boyfriend, or what the fuck ever it is, but it ain't good. Now that I know. It's ridiculous. If somebody wants me, they're going to have to give me a piece of the team, ownership. For my first contract, son, you ain't getting shit now. You've been exposed for the queer bait you are, and I knew you was a queer bait before then. It's just the rest of these fools out here didn't know. Wilder, I knew what you were years ago, sitting over in the U.S., our play-like pretend champion for all of us. I knew you wasn't worth the shit then. You selectively fought people. You didn't fight a real champion to get that title. Uh, I knew once you run up on a real man, you'd get your clock clean. You got you got that shit three times in a row, didn't you? Can't handle it. They, they cheated. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Well, boy, you received it. Yeah, you did. And it's a cotton-picking shame because you could have been a great champion. 
You didn't need no yes men around you. You needed somebody like me that would have told you, get your wiry ass up there and start jumping fucking rope. I'll come back and check on you in two hours. Keep in mind there's a camera running in here. That's what you needed. And ain't no Malik Scott or nobody else going to technically rise you up through anything. It's only so far, and I think he's going to be a good, great trainer. But he can't make a man's heart. He can't do that. You got to get somebody young. You got to be up on somebody. And to all you motherfuckers out there that think you're somebody, you may run, run across my son or one like him, and you're going to find out your big mouth and all this effeminate shit you spew is going to get your face bashed in. Be a man. Help a sport out. This world ain't about just you getting money and gaining assets. It's about you doing something decent. And y'all will do good to realize that before you go out here worshiping up on a damn queer bait candy ass.